Last week, our journey took us up the Wigan flight of locks, and as soon as we exited the flight, we were met by a dense carpet of aquatic weeds. Our initial mooring turned out to be a tranquil haven, nestled just across from a picturesque golf course and the serene Hague Hall Country Park. It was the perfect place to take a well-deserved break and rejuvenate. Good morning. Good morning. So I brought Carol out on a jolly today, haven't I, Carol? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> She's so ungrateful. <laughs> I know how to spoil a girl, don't I, Carol? Oh, yeah. <laughs> really pushing a boat out today. Yeah. We've got uh, <laughs> no pun two, intended. <laughs> two, two, br two breakfasts on the way. We, we, we were taking Tilly out for a walk, and so we decided to come and get ourselves a quick breakfast. Instead of having something really healthy on the boat, we decided to eat a full breakfast here. <laughs> so. But it uh, saves cooking, doesn't it? And it means Carol can look around at the things that we don't need. <laughs> yes. Back at our mooring, we decided to explore the surroundings. Local residents that we met on the towpath shared an intriguing tip about a disused railroad viaduct nearby and kindly provided us with directions. Eager to embark on this adventure, we decided to bring Tilly along. This relatively unknown viaduct gracefully spans the River Douglas near Pendlebury Lane in Hague. It towers at a height of 50 feet and stretches to an impressive length of nearly 1,000 feet, featuring eight brick arches. Danger. It doesn't fill you with confidence, does it? Danger. Falling masonry hazard. <laughs> It's a pretty big viaduct. For more details about this viaduct and its history, please check out the video link in the description below. through Adlington, I think it's White Bear Marina. And we saw our friend Bill. We saw Cana the Canadian. Bill the Canadian, the entertainer. PB Mechanical Services offer new, second-hand and vintage engine sales, engine servicing, repairs and overalls, electrical and plumbing work, 
and they have some chandlery items as well. With the necessary parts on order, we proceeded to moor on the Adlington side of Chorley. This strategic location provided us with easy access to a delightful treat, a fantastic ice cream shop named Frederick's. It's a nice, a nice day for ice cream. Frederick's is a cherished family-owned business with a legacy dating back to 1892. Crafting real Italian ice cream is their passion, a tradition honed and perfected for over four generations by the Federici family. Their production facility operates tirelessly, seven days a week, ensuring that each scoop of ice cream is consistently first class, delightfully fresh, and utterly delicious. <laughs> Frederick's offers an extensive selection of mouth-watering luxury ice cream flavors, 120 of them, ranging from beloved luxury vanilla to the more adventurous tastes of licorice or bubblegum, and they use only the finest natural ingredients, so no additives. What's it like? Yummy. And I got Nutella, and we both got raspberry sauce with these hundreds and thousands of um, little bits of crunchy bits. sugar on the <laughs> uh, on the cone so this is this is definitely not if a... you're in the area you have to go to Fredericks. have to go to Fredericks. it's yeah. really good it is good it's people she can't stop like she's someone she's straight in she just wants a bit of a force you know uh... <laughs> So pretty. Isn't she lovely? Oh, How old is she? Seven. Snow. No, yeah, no one knows. She's, she's not like, oh, look it. Flipping heck. Yeah, she's in good shape. Unbelievable. Good shape. Can't believe you're seven. I would have thought he was going to say about a year. <laughs> yeah. She's beautiful. Oh, she's she's in just great in right, condition. She's right, good condition. Yeah. Really. What do you want? What is it? Do you want to go boop de doo? <laughs> <laughs> You go boop de doo. Alright, let's take you. What are you doing? I'm not doing anything. <laughs> what do you mean you're not doing don't anything? Show me. You're doing something. What don't do you mean me. don't show you? You've got a YouTube channel. You have to be shown. I don't want to be shown. It's compulsory. Oh my Is God. that a gin and tonic you're drinking? I, I haven't had a sip yet. Yeah, but you will be drinking I it. I will be, if I can get this off. So this, this is a new, <laughs> new, oh, Carol can't get the uh, Velcro sticky thing off. Stuff off. But this is, um, one of the new fly screens. The other one is, a front is at the it just front. Helps. It's not perfect. You can see all the tools of her labors here <laughs> on the table, plus the copious amounts of alcohol, which make the work go much <laughs> more smoothly. Yeah, right. I love it. Yeah, that's why. You're that, too busy. That's why this is on crooked. <laughs> I was just talking to the people in the who have a business on the corner of this terrace of uh, nice old stone properties and the house on the corner was owned by a chap called Leonard Fairclough all right and he <laughs> he <clears throat> he made all of the railings here he had he, he was a famous stonemason in the area and he, he kept his Rolls Royce out the back that's how successful he was and eventually he moved to London 
but he he was responsible for all of these and the stonework on them is really beautiful. What attracted us to this house was this statue of Queen Victoria on the top. And it says Victoria Regina or Reg 1887. I walked past this several times going to get some groceries and I didn't look up and see her. So that was Leonard Fairclough, Fairclough's house and <clears throat> opposite here is a park where again he made all the railings. Leonard Fairclough and it, it's really like he created this park um, for the local people. So we're having breakfast, aren't we? <laughs> well, breakfast for Carol in a bus. big slice of coffee and walnut cake. They didn't have what I wanted. Yeah, so. They didn't have the healthy options, so <laughs> she went for coffee and walnut cake. Somebody has to do it. It was only one left, and I didn't want it to sit there by itself. So. And we're, we're on the upper deck of a, a, a double-decker bus, a 1980s double-decker bus, which has been, the bus has been converted into a cafe. This so is kind of cool. I'll, I'll take a little video of, of that as well. It's the second such thing we've been on like this. Yeah, because we the did last time the one was in Liverpool. In Liverpool. Yeah. And here's, here's Frankie. So Frankie obviously has the freedom of the bus. He's looking for opportunity. What do you want? What do you want? Okay. If you're hungry. Are you hungry? You know what hungry is, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, he does. Yes, a lovely Tell boy. Him. It's a girl, actually. So this is quite a busy spot up here. It's quite a nice place to come and just watch the canal. We've got, uh, there's a boat, a day boat hire company called Alabec Narrowboats. And one there's some in. coming and one getting instructions before they go out. This gives people a nice little opportunity to explore the canal a bit. We've moored up Liberty behind the last of the boats to be going out today, I think. So it gives us time for our breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Let's get our breakfast ready. It's open. Thursday to Sunday, 10 till 3. And it's nice. Nice little cafe. Very nice. It's got a food hygiene rating of 5. And when the bus is moving, do not speak to or distract the driver. Or stand forward at this notice. I'm going to stand forward a bit. So this is the heavy duty This is one. the heavy duty replacement. Brilliant. Yeah. And, and, those, and that's the standard one. I mean, you can see how flimsy it is compared to Gosh, the yeah, It really is, isn't it? It's no yeah. comparison. Well, these don't have springs, you see. They replace them with nylon buffers. Oh, OK. Um, I'll be interested to know. Operation. Do you have to make any other adjustments, spacing-wise or anything? No. Oh, that's good. No, that's quicker than... That's amazing. I'm amazed that right. you've got it out so quickly. I've done a few now. So here you can see on the right the old flexible coupling which was on its last legs. Pretty sad looking. And also the, uh, the standard duty drive plate which has uh, wear in the springs so that would have explained the chattering. 
and so, listen to it now. It is very quiet, it's very smooth, lovely. made all the difference. Thumbs up to PB Mechanical Services. Fantastic job, guys. Thanks, Adam and Brian. So now we're carrying on. I'm just about to plow through these kayakers up ahead. Hopefully not. <laughs> I'll sound the horn. <laughs> Don't do that to them. <laughs> So Carol on her usual treasure hunt in the charity shops. And I just bought some chocolate nuts and chocolate raisins in Chocobella. It sells all kinds of things. And then I got this. Gin and tonic marzipan. Praline with gin lime marzipan. I suspect it doesn't contain any real gin. Should be interesting. Unfortunately, this is neither smelly vision nor some kind of taste vision. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it as to how it how it tastes. But there we are. It's a Niederegger. Nice dark chocolate. Mm. It's really good. It has a strong marzipan flavor, which is nice. And the chocolate's lovely but you'd have to eat an awful lot to get drunk. I'm right by the Crown Pub on the corner is a wonderful horse chestnut tree full of conkers, look at that. But we used to love collecting conkers, throwing sticks up at the trees to knock the fruit down and then doing all kinds of weird things to the conkers to make them harder. And this is this is really a lovely part of Chortley. A nice looking church. Still got some stained glass. It looks like a lot of it was lost at some time. I just had a gin and tonic marzipan. That's disgusting. Yeah, it didn't really taste a gin and tonic terribly. That's disgusting. Taste, tasted mainly of marzipan, but I was just admiring this horse chestnut tree. You know what and I'm this admiring? And this is this a really old... pretty part of Chorley. I'm looking at this old shop. Look at those things that came there. Look at that. Wilcox and Sons, established 1878. Oh, yeah. Isn't that wonderful to still oh, see yeah. that in business for so long? Carol will feel quite young in there. So this is inside Wilcox, which is an amazing shop. It's just one of those shops you want to keep looking around. And the staff here are really friendly. The owner, Arthur, and uh, the lady who, who works here, Debbie, have been very welcoming. And it is just a a great place. So I bought bought myself a scythe for cutting down the high grass where we moor. 
Carol is selecting a, a basket at the moment. Oh, that clock looks perfect for what I'm looking for. This is 17. Yep. This is 28. But the benefit, that, that, the 28's okay, we'll the better. 28. We're... I can't stand round stuff on a on a rectangular boat. It is. It really is. It it. it I must be a bit OCD. These, these will glow in the dark, won't they? Yeah, that's perfect. I'm looking for one of those because we wake up in pitch black, and I have no idea what time it is. But once I get up, I wake the dog. Then I have to get up. So. Is a method to my madness. They they don't need to be plugged into work, do they, Arthur? Those those are battery powered. Okay, that's perfect. Look at all this lot. And I'm getting the alarm clock as well, which is a battery alarm clock. Okay. And look, those of you of a certain age <clears throat> will remember Humbrol paints that we all used to paint our Spitfires and our Lancaster bombers when we built our airfix kits. Just look at the selection here. And you compare this to any of the, the chain stores and the big DIY stores, and they have crammed in more in this space than b &Q can cram in on their thousands of square feet. They've got all these different hasps and eyes, loads of different hooks. Look at this. And the prices are really reasonable as well. <laughs> oink, oink. Yeah, I think, I think so. They got a really nice selection of kitchen knives as well. They do the Swiss Army knives. Oh, they do these really excellent utility knives as well. So this is the place to come. If you need anything and you're moored up near here, come into this place. I have the pulled pork and I'm putting coleslaw on it, as you do. And this is Philly cheese steak fries. fries. And look at yours. Look at this. Look. Wink, wink. Look at that. I, I bet you could get your whole mouth up to that. Including, <laughs> including the stick. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed the video. If you have,
please like, comment, and share. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe and click the bell to be notified when we put up new content. See you soon!